I'm Michael Sean Harris, and you're listening to Mike's Moment Of, a weekly podcast in which I, along with my guests, share our various interests in moments of inspiration, truth, life, technology, culture, and more. I hope you're entertained and informed, and that you feel inspired to join me again and again in my Moments Of. Hey, welcome back to Mike's Moment of. This episode, this is episode 37. Uh, and this episode is going to be a continuation, kind of, of what we kind of started with Faye Ellington. Uh, I'm going to go down like a list of mythological characters and um, superstitions and, you know, different things like that. So, it's been raining for days and it's raining right now. You can probably hear the rain. So, hopefully, it's just going to add to the atmosphere. <laughs> and, you know... A lot of these are kind of scary. I mean, I know a lot of Jamaicans take offense when we talk about Halloween. It's like, oh, Jamaicans don't celebrate Halloween. I kind of like Halloween. Uh, But, you know, for the benefit of those who don't, this is not a Halloween episode. But for those who like Halloween, it can serve as a Halloween episode because of the stuff we're talking about. And it's a nice mix of things. So, um, before I get into them, uh, I think... I know I had said in a previous episode that I was going to go up until about 50 episodes, but then I realized that that's going to take me into 2021. And the last couple of months in this in the year is usually for a few other things that I do, like Mike's moment of cheer and, you know, some other things like that. So I'm going to need to make some time. So I'm going to go to episode 40 for this season. So we have a few left, not many. And... Um, you know, if I feel like putting a little bonus episode here or there, I might. But I'm going to I'm gonna cut this off at 40 and then maybe pick it back up in February, end of February, like when I started. Uh, so, yeah. So, you know, coming to a close. I hope you, you guys have been checking out episodes and uh, sharing them. If not, you know, do. Just go and share an episode. Um, you know, they're available on Apple and on Google and spotify and also on on youtube and a few other places but you know subscribe etc right um so yeah so we're gonna go now let's start with these uh jamaican folk characters and the superstitions let's start with the rolling calf now we've we spoken about rolling calf before but you know in speaking to a few different people different people have different stories so one person said that they heard that rolling calf is what happened to you if you murdered a butcher but you know it is said that the butcher becomes the rolling calf in the afterlife maybe uh and then another person said you know it's just butchers in general for all the cows and other animals that he slaughtered during his time in the land of the living so and someone even had a description it was half man below and the upper body was the cow with chains and he was breathing smoke and fire through his nose. Now, someone else said that it was about a murdered butcher man and that the rolling calf always was signaled with the rattling of the cow chain. Uh, but that it was the biggest red bull you ever saw with fire in his eyes and sulfur for breath. And that he ran on three feet because the front hooves of the two of the two front legs was fused into one big one and then he would run you down you'd have to run under the fence uh, so that he can't follow you but if you climb over the fence dog near your supper mm, woe be unto you so in summary the rolling calf is the story of what happens to butchers when they die the idea is that You become the animal that you killed, and when butchers are being buried, uh, they would bury a chain on the body so that people can hear them coming when their ghosts return. 
Oh, I love a, love a story about rolling calf. I think they're so creepy, scary as ever. And um, yeah, I mean, I look forward to any kind of thing that might involve those, the, these kind of characters. Next up is the River Mumma. Now, River Mumma is a mermaid who lives under the rocks by the riverside. Now, you could also say that River Mumma is a siren, but let's go with the mermaid for now. So when midday comes and the sun shines, you can see her on the stone combing her long flowing hair with a gold comb. Now, the fishermen always try to catch her and, and steal her comb. So she will drown them. Sometimes she will rescue little children who fall into the river. They say that the river Mumma was actually a river guardian. And if you took more than you need for yourself, then she would seduce you with your lust and greed. And at the end, she would drown you. So there's a, a similar kind of thing in the Basque country in Spain. And it's called a Lamia. Now the Lamia, or maybe it's called Lamia, Lamia, uh, or plural Lamiac, is a siren or an aerial kind of creature in Basque mythology. And they're typically portrayed as living in and around rivers. They're depicted as being very beautiful and are said to often stay at the river shore combing their long hair with a golden comb and are involved with tales where, they're, where they easily charm men. They're also characterized as having duck feet. They sound very similar to me. So maybe, maybe it's something I hold over from the Spanish who were here long ago. Cool, so River Mumma. All right, next one. Next is the old hag. Well, the old hag is what we'd call it. But that's what it means, the old hag. And so as far as I remember with the old hag, is that it's an old woman, kind of like a witch or uh, um, a banshee, which is probably where it's coming from, this Irish thing. Um, but honestly, this this idea of the old hag um, or the, 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 the night hag um, exists in almost every country and culture. So the old hag, as far as I know, in the Jamaican context, old woman, a witch, kind of, who would um, who would prey on little children. She would go to them when they're sleeping, and she would take their skin, take their life force, take their skin, and and use it to keep herself alive, keep herself young. So, so there is this idea also of sleep paralysis and the nightmare, the night hag. And, and that's where that term nightmare comes from. Um, the nightmare that, you know, they used to imagine that you couldn't get up because there was a creature sitting on your chest like a succubus. And um, so there, there's, there's that in Scottish and Irish um, culture, you know, there's old hag, the, the Welsh hag of the mist and um, the Berea hag. Um, so with the, with the night hag, it was a you know a supernatural creature, um, commonly associated with the phenomenon of uh, phenomenon of sleep paralysis, um, commonly during when a person feels a presence or a supernatural malevolent being immobilizing them, sitting on their chest or at the foot of their bed, and so you know that's where the nightmares were, were, were that's where that term came from until it's taken on the, the more modern meaning. So old hag. Interesting, scary, creepy, important. Wow, and the rain is really, really coming down now. Okay, so the next one is what we call the doppy bat. Now, the doppy bat is not an actual bat. It's actually just a large moth. A large, usually brown or black or a mixture, uh, maybe some gray. They usually have some patterns, but they're really dark and they're big. So yeah, Jamaica, we call it the doppy bat. So when I was growing up, um, whenever a large moth came into the house, anywhere near the house, you know, people always think, or still do, some people, that it's a dead relative or a ghost or somebody coming to visit you. So that is the thing with the, with the large moths. 
the poor things and people keep trying to kill them because of that. Anyway, that's the doppy bat. Let's talk about the cotton tree. So, the cotton tree, and we've spoken about this before, is kind of like the dwelling place of doppies. Doppy is a ghost, right? So ghosts live in the cotton tree. It is said that you shouldn't sit on that cotton tree after 6 p.m. or doppy will box you. The doppy will hit you down, right? So there, there have been some famous cotton trees in Jamaica. I remember there's a, there was, I don't see it there anymore, there was a cotton tree just outside the fence of our house, just at the, the top of the ridge of a gully that's beside, behind our house. And I think I used to be afraid of it, I'm sure, because I used to look at it at night and wonder what was going on. I guess maybe because my brothers and sisters used, used to tell me ghost stories about things like that. But there was also a, a big cotton tree uh, on what is now Mandela Highway and I think it was called the Tom Kringle Cotton Tree and that was also a famous one. I think there's a story as well of of uh, one of the Kumina queens kind of going into a cotton tree and and receiving her her quote-unquote ordination to be the Kumina queen and she came out knowing you know the, the, the African language and all these different things being able to communicate with the ancestors. So don't chop down your cotton tree and, and don't sit down under it after 6 p.m. The doppy will follow you. Doppy will box you down. All right, here are a couple of quick ones. Sorry, you know the vegetable chocho, Jamaican vegetable, um, and I'm sure it exists in other places, but then there's something called a doppy chocho. It looks just like one, just like the vegetable, but if you squeeze it, it pops. So that's one, that's another one. So cobwebs, that's another superstition now. So, they also say that Doppy sometimes comes in the form of a cobweb. So who knows if it's really a spider web or it's a Doppy cobweb? You never know. All right, so Anansi. You know, Anansi uh, might be a god, um, might be just a mythological character. It's a trickster. It's coming from Africa. And so this has now become one of our things. So I'm going to play a couple of pieces, a song and a story by a maroon storyteller uh, by the name of Baba Ro Cawley. And he's from a compound in St. Elizabeth. And this was recorded by Olive Lewin and Hazel uh, in 1969. So this is Baba Ro Cawley. Play my you are in Kimbayo, Kemaye Day. All right, so that was Babaro singing Anansi Mashwe. Now, when I hear one of the stories, this involves Anansi and Brother Jackass and and two young ladies. So <laughs> here we go. And you know, coincidentally, I've used the audio from this story in another piece called Anansi's Story. And I used his, the melody of his voice, because his, his speaking voice has this amazing melody. I used the melody of, of, of his voice, extracted that me melody, and created chords and, and uh, scale and whatnot out of it. Um, but anyway, that's for another time. Here is Babaro. There was a lady who had two daughters, mm -hmm. two fine girls. Then this dreadful announcer we hear about, mm -hmm. he always traveled away and in hoping hot you know, anxious for the girl then. Mm -hmm. So he tell the tell them that the old lady that the girl their mother they, they, they worry you, you you know. Oh, no, we manage to be secure or give me or make a carrier home and I will feed her and care her good for you. Well, the two young ladies, they agree. 
and and uh, she come and take them mother and go away with the bush. Char then carry her go away and go in a bush go make hot and put the old lady there and never return back mm. to her look in fear. Every day she the woman them in tell them oh the old lady look well and look nice. Splendid old lady coming. Well, when you see me you going pay me. At this time, the old lady dead. Mm. And the woman wait and wait, the young woman then wait and want to see their mother and can't see, see her. So, the two of them start one morning and they said, look, I'm not going to see her, see her. And they started. And they started, my dear lady, and they take the bush, but they seeing a little truck Track, you know, and then fella I tell them go book up one whole hut. And that was the hut the mother in. And then going at the hut and begin search one at the girl said, Aya, see mama ring ya. She find the ring in at the whole hut. And so well, then they take the ring and come home. Mother bone and everything in at the whole hut. Go home and one answer to catch him. How them to catch an answer? I don't know what plan they know about them can't catch an answer at all, but Brother Cass hear about him and go to the lady and tell him, say, if you pay me a catch Jackass and a catch a Nancy and carry him come give you. That's a lot. Sir, I can't say I don't want nothing much. Give me a couple of water can. And the lady then find the can quick time and give Jackass. And Jackass travel with and yard and when he go and yard and go. She just tell when he come night and as he travel the year a late, you know, and how we craving and good for nothing. The jackass go on outside, go lie down, hit the can, tell him belly full, all right. And they don't and they grunt, they grunt. Mm. Uh, the drag, uh, Nancy, they go catch you, no? Mm. Mm. They grunt, mm, and Nancy pass. Hey, bear jack, what the what wrong with you? What do you? And say, Lord, no can. Can't they kill me, master? If he can't tell, I don't know what to do with it. He said, Jesus, bro, where you get can? I said, so, I know where to get can. I had much can you hear yeah, in my belly, I know you want some. He said, me, oh, yes, sir. Give me some. He said, go take a bowl, come, 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 come. And I said, trouble with something, go take a bowl, come, and set the bowl of the car's body. And start a creeping out the can and they threw in a lot when in the crepe and the can green and they drop in at the bowl in so oh god and I say mad. Dracas is so mild do. And in crepe the can and crepe the can so, so in the crepe, Dracas they draw up, you know, they draw up the can to make him hand go past ya. Mm-hmm. And in crepe and crepe the can so tell my hand catch to Yasuo. Jakar say, create a portion of the can, create a of the can, the little more. So Jakar feel where the hand come, you know, say, if he get up by Yasuo, he hold him. So he bend on and stretch his hand in, he creep the can, whap, Jakar set up his body. <laughs> set up his hand, Yasuo. And Jakar, Tuzzling self, so, tuzzling self, so. He said, Brad Jack, at the time he's taking head, he said, Brad Jack, what you go do? Jack said, Mommy, mm, they go do. Hmm? Jack has get up, turn up. And he hang a donkey body with him. I know by you. And Jack, donkey brave. Ah! <laughs> He, oh, when did the brain know the brown no man didn't hear him and tell them, he didn't tell them, say, any time and catch him, he didn't need them to hear him breathe. Oh! Lord, Sandy, Chaka, 
start with him. Then they have to go through one Kesada piece. And the train gets the Kesada three inches to Jakas all in the Kesada pub. And then break down a whole blend of the Kesada. And when brown no man then they are then yard and sick. We then can see out and see the Jakas like come cut up, cut up, cut up, cut up, cut up, cut up, and and I see him I'm back here. Set time, God in my home. And then going in with him, the two ladies take a Nancy, Nancy and Nancy, and they go get away, you know. We mama said, oh, Lord, they are yard, the brown man said, they are yard. All right, I think they are yard will be soon fine. So then, put up now for beating to death, then go and beat a Nancy to death, so then, tie him. The two of the woman then, tie him, tie him, tie him good and throw him down from the floor in the house. And left him gone, gone, broke with, pick or murder him to death. When then gone, he lay down there for a nose and go and kill him. And they don't, they, they, they grunt, they grunt that they see monkey, they pass. They begin grunt, so monkey, they pop, say, and I say, what you do? I say, I don't brown no man, I say, I don't do brown no man, tie me up, throw down ya. Say, say, me, me one wife. I mean, no one, no wife. <laughs> the whole monkey, he had monkey, say, well done. You know one wife, he said, no, I mean, no one, no wife, I don't. Mm. Monkey said, let me lose you, then you take me. He said, he's here, black, you come, no. And monkey said to work and look, and I said, let him go. And I said, and I said, get up, and... Tie monkey! In tie monkey! And throw him down on the floor. And him walk out and gone. Now there is a tree set right over the, the brown man, the house. About way after way, you're running in your peanut that tree and can't see what they don't know out of the yard. And did they so tell when the two brown man come in with them? Two bundle of whip can see monkey lay down and I say, no. I say, but monkey, what you do ya? No, monkey, tama, tama, you know, and say, ha, 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 the two of them go round and then come round and come in. And them. Pa and then. Come in with one bundle of whip and then beat out the pan monkey. Then beat out the whip clean pan him. Are you one way if you are right? I will give you a wife. And then beat him, then beat him, then beat him. So tell. They bleed like a hug. Hmm? But. One of the ladies say, oh, as I know him, he said then, where you, you let go and ask if I said him, my life I'll be catching home, but he, he can't catch an answer. So, you see him in life, and in Kuwe, a monkey go away. And a Nancy. Monkey go go turn up under one tree where, under the tree and tree where a Nancy him, they, they bleed, you know. Mm -hmm. They bleed them well, all right. The blood drop. The monkey blood drop a Nancy shot under the tree. He say, hey. 
we build come but you know what look for see monkey so we build come from the job and we got a pretty 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 shot well the brown woman then got a glance say monkey there in the tree then go then surround the tree and here they surround the tree monkey come down and and see come down and can't take it they they no hear me and I'll sit back here Well, some get it, and some get you. Me not make no profit, <laughs> cause I don't, I don't hear a resolution yet. But yes, that was the uh, quite morbid tale of um, a Nancy, uh, you know, pulling the wool over two young ladies' eyes, taking their mother, and putting her in a hut, and she she dies there, and then the two girls, and I'm telling you this just just in case you don't understand the patois. The two girls then find Jackass. Jackass, so he can catch a Nancy, um, and you know he has a quite an interesting method to catch a Nancy. And I'm getting to that. You might have to listen and try and figure it out. And then he's caught a Nancy, but then Monkey comes and sees a Nancy, and Nancy lied to him, and then he gets tied up instead, and be, and then beaten by the two women, and then they have to try and catch a Nancy again. So yeah, <laughs> that is a Nancy. And that was Babaro Kali from Akompong, Saint Elizabeth. Uh, he's a maroon storyteller. Well, I'm sure he was more than a storyteller, but in this in this instance, he's a storyteller. All right. So, next one now, Blackheart Man. Now, you remember, you know, what Aunt Faye was saying before is that sometimes some of the terms used probably have some kind of a racist connotation. Um, but I'm just gonna give it to you as it is. Um, so. They said that the, the the black heart man would prey mostly on children. He would kill them and take out their hearts to use for evil. So, someone was telling me about this. Said that um, her mom would usually tell her about this. Tell her, you know, she and her brothers and sisters about this. And um, she was, you know, she thinks that maybe they just made up these characters to to keep them in line, um, to make sure that they came straight home from school, kind of thing. Uh, because you know it made them so afraid that that they wouldn't stray, they wouldn't stray from the path and go home. So the story has it that the black heart man was studying from the Maccabees Bible, the Maccabees tome, and he knows of the powers of life over life and death. And so you should try never to beg any favors or owe him anything because the price will always be way too high for you to pay. All right, next superstition: mint tree. Now, other these have to do with doppy. You realize? So the mint tree, if it smells really strong, if the mint smells really strong, they say that a doppy, a ghost, a spirit, is playing in it. <laughs> All right. So there's some other stories. There's just some big boy stories. I don't have any examples of that, but just keep that in mind. If I can get somebody to tell me some big boy stories another time, that will be another episode. All right. So <clears throat> there's another kind of myth about this coffin about the walking coffin and there's also one about a three wheel coffin and i'm not sure if if the things have been combined but the walking coffin uh it actually made the papers back in the day so i'm told uh the last wishes of the person who died were not met and the coffin would not be buried it just refused to be buried so it turned over the hearse and then it stood on its end after spinning in a road to point out the wrong doors in the funeral procession like a creepy kind of spin the bottle <laughs> then it waited on its end guarded by two big jonkros all right a jonkro is a is a turkey buzzard right two big jonkro and would be spotted in different places en route to the grave site when the wrong doors when the wrong was rectified then the coffin settled and it it was it was it would allow itself to be buried so the three wheel coffin uh in the late 1960s a mr brown died in manchester and the coffin got away and traveled to town and was spotted speeding all over west kingston with three jonkros perched on it and i think that's where that bob marley song mr brown comes from that's that's what it's referring to so you can check out that bob marley song mr brown all right so 
you know, there's d- different characters in the Anansi stories. You heard a couple of them. There's Breja Cast, there's Monkey, there's Tiger, there's Brother Tukuma. Um, and Brother Tukuma apparently was also Anansi's right hand man. He, you know, he was always a brother, he was always a problem um, to Anansi. And they both were giving each other problems. But you also heard another thing about Tukuma. Okay, so White Witch of Rose Hall. We kind of know this story. It's a famous story about this plantation owner who killed, I think she killed three of her husbands. They said she was a witch. I think she used to have relations with with the enslaved Africans who worked on the plantation. And, um, you know, there's stories about her. There's books about her. Um, There might even be movies about her. There's definitely plays about her. So that's a White Witch of Rose Hall. Okay, so you ever heard this the Toots and the Metal song that song about the, the six and the seven books? The six and the seven books they wrote, you know. So you know that in the Bible there's no six and seven books of Moses. Check it. Okay, so the six and seven books of Moses are actually books of witchcraft. You can Google it. But you know, they have spells and seals and all kind of stuff in it. So that's stuff to think about because I'm I'm not I'm still not sure why that was mentioned <laughs> in that song, but it's interesting. Okay. Uh, okay, so there's another one. Another another myth, myth mythological thing. I guess it's kind of recent because I think I brought this up with, with Aunt Faye as well. And she said, no, that's kind of that's kind of modern. The Causeway Nurse. So, you know, the Causeway is that kind of bridge that goes to um, Portmore. So there was a nurse who was always seen, and, it, and she was only seen by men, on the Causeway. They say that she was looking for the man who killed her and dumped her near the causeway. And then somebody else says that their grandpa told told them that he saw her on a on a truck run early in the morning before daybreak. But something was strange because she never broke the fog like a person would. And he heard about her, so he heard about her about the story, so he didn't stop. Lucky good for him. Um, and then there's another ghost now called Kopi, uh, that was that used to appear in St. Thomas. Kopi was searching for someone who had hurt him. Uh, from Yalas to Bowden, he, he, you know, they'd find him along that way. So there's also, you know, these kind of stories of things that have happened, which are true stories. You know, well, some said that the, the coffin thing was a true story. But there's a Kendall crash, which is a train crash. And there's, uh, I think PBCJ has documentaries on that. Um, you know, lots of accidents would happen in Cane Peace and Innswood. Um, after the Kendall crash, people would pick up passengers. And then when they reach a destination, there will be no one there. The Duppies were looking for their way home. The stories of people being picked up and the driver's head raised. You know, you know when you have um, when you hear raises, you know, you 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 get goose flesh and stuff, and they just got confused. Also, stories of people trying to to swing away from someone in the road and then ended up crashing themselves. And these were the ghosts from the Kendall crash. All right, you know, this is another superstition. And I mean, this is a worldwide one. You know, have a horseshoe over the front door. It's for good luck to keep away evil. Um, another one is to sprinkle salt outside. Uh, when you have a death in the home, uh, you're supposed to sweep the house and rearrange the furniture, flip the mattress. And on the day of the funeral, you pass a baby over the body of the person who died and that person will guard the baby. Interesting. Another one is to sprinkle salt on a broom and put it behind the door upside down. That's to ward off evil, I think, as well. Uh, oh, no. That is if you have a visitor and you want them to leave, you sprinkle salt on a broom and put it behind the door upside down. All right. So when I say your head swell when, when Duppy is near, um, that's another one. If you if you wash your face with rice water, you can see the duppies. We hear that rice water and and the matter from uh, a dog's eyes. It's supposed to be a dog and a cat, but that, what they say is that you know nobody's nobody's cat now. No time for that. So they won't allow you to get that from them. So from a dog, and make sure 
Um, you don't wait. There's another one. You don't wait to see if it's a coolie duppy, how offensive, um, an, an Indian duppy, uh, because he will break your neck. That's another one. All right, so this is the 40 nights. So this is not the nine nights. This, this, no, this is the Etu people, the Etu people. And we're going to, we'll talk with, 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 with Hazel about Etu, because that's another thing that's coming up. But the Etu people in Hanover, 40 nights. 40 nights after, the, after someone has died. They leave a plain colored dish with food in it for the spirit. No dish with flowers in it, because if they try to pick the flowers and it's not real, the doppy will quarrel with you. So it's just a plain dish. No little flower patterns, no nothing. No floral dish, no, no, no fancy dish. Plain colored dish, right? All right, so the wakes and the nine nights. When you leave a wake or a nine night, you must not say goodbye. So you don't say, all right, bye-bye, I'm gone. Don't say goodbye to, uh, or to anyone or else the doppy will follow you home. And you don't leave until after midnight. Because if not, bad things will happen to you. All right, good. So another one about spin your roll. Spin your roll, uh, like when a glass falls and breaks or destruction will catch you, you have to spin your roll. You have to spin seven times. Uh, when you go to the revival yard, uh, they take you around the seal. Uh, the revivalists go around the seal clockwise. They do this to clear themselves of any spirits that come along with them. The seal is on a cross with a bottle of plain water uh, in each in uh, in each bottle, and there's a uh, bottle of plain water east, west, north, and south, and a bowl of water with leaf of life in the basin. Um, there's another superstition now. This one is about pointing in a graveyard. If you point in a graveyard, you have to bite your ten fingers, or they will drop off. <laughs> So no pointing. Don't point at nobody. Don't point at no grave. Don't point at no doppy. All right. So we mentioned this before. Jackfruit and pumpkin. You mustn't travel with a whole jackfruit in your car or you'll get a flat tire or crash. You have to cut it or push a long knife through the stem to the heart of the jackfruit or the pumpkin. All right. Here's another one now. Obia. When people are working on you and trying to destroy you, you have to keep dry coconut with you, and when it bursts, all tension or problem will go, right? Or you can just break the coconut, uh, or have a plain bottle of cream soda. And another one, so we mentioned the six and seven books of Moses, and then there's another one, you know, the, the, the greater and lesser keys of Solomon, I had to find that out as well. Um, they will instruct you, well, they instruct you on how to wheel all kind of evil things. So, um, you know, look if you want. All right, so I've done, and I, I mean, I'm not just mentioned Obia, but this is, they, they, sometimes they kind of mix, but this is about Kumina. So I've done quite a bit of research, and I'm still doing research on Kumina and on the different rituals, etc. So a good friend of mine who who's played in the band with me and stuff, his, his, he plays Kumina, and his father was a Kumina practitioner, and so was his grandfather. So he tells a story uh, of when he was living with his mother and grandfather, and uh, and his grandfather was well, you know, a, a well-known Kumina person who who used to do things, you know, either to harm people or or to help people. Like, but he was he was pretty well known and pretty powerful. And someone sent a spirit, a fallen angel, after him. So this is Kevin Douglas, and you're gonna hear his story about that. One night we were at home, me, my grandfather, and my mother. Uh, we were at home in the house and thing, and I just saw my grandfather moving all over the place and up and down and all over the place. And I said to him, I asked him, I said, what's what, what wrong with you? He must said that there is something, something is coming. Um, and uh, we must go and try to see if we can go up under the bed and see if we can take out the steel piece. The steel piece, which is a steel peepee. So why him had steel peepee under the bed? Because he used the steel peepee for him always have a steel peepee put on. Oh, so it was in a to, bottle or in a Yeah, man, in a bottle because we used the peepee in a chimney. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. In other time, we used to All right, in a okay, chimney. okay. All right, so he took the piece and threw it in another bottle, mm-hmm. in a gallon bottle. So there was a gallon of this mm-hmm. under the bed for a long while in the day because... I said that. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. With that touch, you know, man. 
So it yeah, bring Master Jesus, mm-hmm. I tell you. So him threw it in the bottle and him threw it and put it under the bed and him the night now he said that we must, we must go and pick it up. Go feed for him mm-hmm. and put it at the doorway. Because there is something coming. So I say I walk home and him call me, me and him go in the little room. Because I have a little office, a little room. Okay. In everything up me there. So people come, they do stuff, him carry them in there so and we talk to them and Okay, um, so that time you were still the second. Yeah, man, that time we were still the, the second. Yeah. Time. Then time I made the thing, man, made it um, made about, made about eleven. Okay. Eleven, ten, ten, eleven. Mm-hmm. Them time then. Made about ten, eleven. Them time then. And uh, in turn, we go pick it up, and uh, we go pick it up, and uh, me ask him how. So I never really want to talk to my mother here. So I'm, me and him go into the room, and he tell me say, somebody has sent a fallen angel. Somebody sending a fallen angel, mm-hmm. and it's on its way. So a fallen angel is a is a earthbound spirit or a, a, a fallen angel is a earthbound spirit. Okay. Is a earthbound spirit, but um is a earthbound spirit where there is a next person who put a evil really like a a wicked evil something on that spirit if you come and let it off by you. Okay. How do they do that? Uh how they do that is uh, as the, you see, the fallen angel, the fallen angel is really looking like an angel. You know? Okay. He's looking like an angel for real. Okay. And uh, even if you can't see that spirit, a spirit at all, that, that thing you're going to see, that one. Oh, Anybody really? can see a fallen angel. Okay. You understand? Because a fallen angel, if you jump on the house, you go here. Because mm-hmm. upon the house, you come all the way. He oh, come, okay. he, he not, he not come face you. Know? He not come face to you. <coughs> okay. He not do that no time at all. It's like a fallen angel is like... Um, they have a lot of pride. No matter what, no matter where you try, if you, if you put to them, if you go and do it, mm-hmm. they don't do it in front of your face, then come behind you. Okay. They always come behind you back and do it. So they don't lick you down behind you, they don't lick you, they don't mm-hmm. lick you in your face. Mm-hmm. A normal spirit now, like um, a normal ancestral spirit, um, will box you in your face, mm-hmm. in front of your face. Just come in front of you and box you. Mm-hmm. You understand? But a falling angel now, now come in front of you. A falling angel first, they will drop. Because a fallen angel normally comes when you are like asleep. Okay. This is why I don't call it a fallen mm-hmm. angel. Because you know that angel come when the angel not come no appear until when they are dead. Okay. You understand? So that's when the angel appears. So this this fallen angel come and when grandfather said that him and him way and everything, so he get all them stuff them and put together already. Show him sitting at him thing in you know, the um Frankincense and myrrh, you know, the, um, you know, the steel people. When the steel people pull in a, uh, a trunk like a lion, mm-hmm. throw it in the, in the steel people and throw some devil drive in it. Okay. Devil drive, one, um, one liquid, one um, dark liquid, look like engine oil. Okay. And throw it in it and wait. And we did there, we sit down and we sit down inside and we wait. And then now, uh, like about five minutes after that, five minutes before, yeah, about five minutes before, we go up on the veranda, we sit down. Okay. And we hear when time him drop on the top of the house. Okay. And he start mechanize and start chant. Not my grandfather, you know, the fall of the angel start chanting. Oh, chant, really? Yeah, man. Start chant and mechanize and run, and we walk around on the line of the house. I come around on the line of the house, like, three times round. Mm-hmm. And then him come back, anti-clockwise and clockwise, come back round again, mm-hmm. and start chant again. And then my grandfather start chant. So what they must chant him? Eh? What they must chant him? He starts saying, um, me lame, me lame, me lame, me lame, me lame. So me lame. like hello or? Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, man. I'm a greeting, see him. Oh, okay. Greeting, see him. You got your grandfather? Yeah. Oh, grandfather but what, what was the angel saying? The angel did that, um, in that make some holy pan nice, like, um, you know, when whole, like whole. Yeah, okay. yeah. But we know, so I chant him, I chant him, because he made that, he made that do like, be a step in and a, ooh, okay. that, 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 what he was sitting there, I say. Okay. But he sound like a whole. Okay. Oh, I make nice. And when my grandfather start say, me lame, me lame, me lame, me lame, me lame. I'm gonna greet him and I tell him, say, yeah, I'm glad you're there, I know you're there. And him come, and when him come, when him start say, me lame, him, him kind of tone down. Fall in jail, he kind of tone down and stop. And then now, he make a big push. The fallen angel make a big push. And you can hear him like, you know, when something roll, and roll off and come so mm-hmm. roll off and come so he come to the bar and then my grandfather just run out and go so shh and dash it pan him okay. and dash the piss pan him and ball out in him okay. and ball out and fly 
it was a literally angel. Okay. Just a literally angel, but it's just that you can't see the head. But it was a, you can see the literal angel fly. Okay. And it wasn't white. Okay. It wasn't white. It's a black. Okay. But you can see the wing and everything. You see the wing. Yeah, man, you see him fly. So when it was, so fly, mm-hmm. fly, when the fly, when he met the fly, it's so loud that the whole house stop. You hear it from the whole house stop when he fly off. Okay. But he ball out when he fly off. Mm-hmm. Like, he him, him, him never say why, it, but it sound like war, but I never wore himself. But it still, it still sound like a hole. Okay. But you hear him ball out. So if it have wings, that's so it's still an earthbound okay. spirit. If it have, yeah, man, it's an earthbound spirit. Same way, okay. it's just that it's a fallen angel, and uh, a fallen angel normally comes from another obia man. Okay. Okay. You understand? So another obia man fix him. Okay. And do all the stuff them to him oh, I see. and send him okay. back. But there was somebody who went. Because my grandfather did for somebody. Okay. And then that person got to another, another man, 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 man to kill, to kill my grandfather. Mm-hmm. You understand? But then could then could be Pretty creepy, huh? I thought so. <laughs> okay. Alright. So we continue, we keep it rolling. Um and for those who are into the Halloween, happy Halloween. For those who aren't, you know, yeah, check out the culture man. Okay. So Screech Owl. So if the Screech Owl uh, flies early at night, don't look at him. Don't look at the Screech Owl. Uh, or or don't, don't allow your eyes to meet his. Or it's death for sure when you hear them. Death. Right? Also, when a bird flies into your house, that means a death as well. All right, so here's some more superstitions. All right, so uh, when... A dog digs a hole in your yard. That means somebody you know is going to die. Another one. When the, You know, we hear this one all the time. When the sun is shining and rain is falling at the same time, that means that Satan, the devil, and his wife are having a fight. All right, now another one. When you bury your dead and you don't want the duppy to bother you, you need to drive a nail in each foot and their spirit will never roam. Now, in... The days of slavery, if um, if they bury the feet, uh, they said they can't move. So you know that tambo song, bury my head but not bury my foot, under cool shady, right? Uh, another one. When you leave your house for long periods of time, you must lean your bed up so that the duppy doesn't sleep on it. And you might have to cover your mirrors and turn your chairs upside down. Okay, so, and then there's the other thing now, the, you know, the Bible and key. So if something has been stolen and the, the thief is known to be in the room, a key may be placed in an open Bible and the names of the people in the room are called one at a time. When the name of the thief is called, the key is supposed to spin. Some say this is a dangerous practice as the key may open up doors for evil spirits to possess us. All right. Um, here's an, a dopey story from someone. Someone had shared this with me. One time, uh, they were on teaching supervision at Broadgate Primary School in St. Mary. And it was closed because a duppy called Frankie Moore had come from St. Thomas and was throwing stones onto the roof. So they had to send for a maroon man from Scotts Hall to get rid of the duppy. Um, Another superstition. When you have a death in your house, it is said that you must rearrange the house, uh, turn the mattress of the deceased on the other side so that the spirit will know he or she is no longer welcome in the house. Another one. Uh, If you see a black cat, a black puss, or a mongoose run across the street, you have to turn back if you're going to look about anything important because it's bad luck. Or spin your roll. (laughs) Um, we spoke about the White Witch of Rose Hall. And uh, there's another thing about her. Someone said that Annie Palmer would shed her skin before going on a haunting. And that an enslaved African saw it, poured salt in the skin. And and then when she tried to put the skin back on, it was it was burning her. It, was, it, it would burn. It would burn. So I heard similar things about the old hag. So it could be a, a thing. Um... If you hear a dog howling, uh, and if you see one, then someone 
is about to die. But, but I, I, you know, the dogs in this neighborhood howl a lot. So I don't know. <laughs> Another one. If um, a mongoose runs across and then runs back again, um, that that means if the mongoose changes his path and double back, you have to do the same thing or you're going to have troubles. Or spin your roll. That seems to be the, um, the catch-all. Uh, okay, the setup, the same night of the death. Um, you can't just leave, you have to spin your roll and then you leave, right? Um, the tree mint. People plant it all around the house when it is smelling very strong, and we heard that before, it means that there's a spirit there. So, with the babies now, with the teeth, you shouldn't count the baby's teeth because they'll go back in. That's one of the superstitions. Hiccups. To cure hiccups, tie a red thread from the baby's clothes on his forehead. Um, red cloth around the baby's wrist so that they are not overlooked. Uh, okay. Story. So, and, I, and again, there's a story. I think we'll get to this one. Um, another time you know I, I mentioned it before about uh, Lewis Hutchinson who is Jamaica's first serial killer and he he's from Scotland but you can google it and you can find out more um, there's we'll mention the Kendall crash there's the Coral Gardens thing with Rastafarian tragedy um, there's a I think I heard another story about I don't know if it was a politician I'm not sure I don't want to get in trouble uh, leading some people some homeless people saying that you know there's home for here leading them to the Red Mud Lake if you know about this, let me know. Um, all right, so here's some more, some more myths that some people still believe. If you walk over spilled salt, bad luck will follow you. And if you're going to throw away bread, you must first wet it because crosses or bad luck will follow you if you don't. If you cut a baby's nails with scissors, it makes them light-handed or make, you know, they become thieves. That's, a, that's a, the myth. If you dream about a wedding, it means there will be a funeral. And if you dream about a new house, it means there will be a death. A baby's uh, umbilical cord, or you know, we we'll call it a navel string. A baby's umbilical cord must not be allowed to fall on the floor. It must be buried uh, between three days and a year after the birth and a tree planted in the spot. In the event that this navel string tree is destroyed or damaged, the child is to be compensated if the property on which a tree is planted is sold, a new tree is to be planted using a sucker from the original tree. Uh, and we know this one. If you open an umbrella over your head under a roof, you'll never get married. Uh, if your right eye twitches or if it's jumping, um, um, you're going to laugh. But if your left eye twitches, you will hear bad news or something that will make you cry. When you lose a tooth, throw it on the rooftop and say, Rata... Rat, rat, uh, take my old teeth and give me a new one. I think there's another way to say that, but I can't remember what it is now. Um, if, uh, while pregnant, a woman scratches any part of her body while um, having a craving for a particular food, it is believed that the baby will have a mark, a birthmark, in the same spot resembling the food the mother craved. All right, so um, I think we can end it there. I mean, there's, this, is a, this is enough to keep you occupied for this time of year. For the people who, who, who like the the scary things in October, and for the people who are just into the these mythological and superstitious aspects of the culture, this was fun and creepy. So um, I hope you enjoy it. And as usual, you know, if you do like, share, subscribe, again, share, you know, share share an episode, and um, and feel free to give me feedback and comments. I I welcome that. All right. Until next time, and remember that you know if you want to support what I'm doing, there's a buymeacupofcoffee.com, and you can see the links in the in the notes and um, slash a e l s e a m. Okay, all right. Until next time. <laughs>